All right, let's go ahead and continue with our video lecture on chapter five, chapter six, sorry, on the classical civilizations of the Americas. Part two, we're going to now look at the Mayan civilization of the Mayas. So the Mayas, as you can imagine, are a heavily agricultural society living in Mesoamerica, uh, modern-day Mexico and Guatemala and El Salvador and a few other places in Central America. Uh, they, even though they're considered a classical civilization, you would notice that their civilization actually lasts for about 300 years beyond the classical era, well, in the, re in the time frame known as the post-classical. Uh, and they kind of continue, or they start from way before as well. But they're still considered the classical civilization because at its height, uh, they were at their high or their golden age during the classical era. So the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, Right, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, all these regions here, right? That is where where the classical civilization of the Me uh, of uh, the Mayans was. So well, the Mayans, um, like I said, they were primarily agricultural, and they start doing uh, new techniques in agriculture that kind of expands the amount of soil that they have to grow crops. And one of the techniques. And we're going to see this happen in other parts of the world as well. Is the use of what we call terrace farming. Uh, so basically, they build these kind of like steps into hills or into mountain sides. Uh, these kind of like layers of um, of soil, and the idea is that you can grow crops there. And by holding the soil in with these steps, uh, then the water won't like run off if you're like irrigating these crops you were getting the soil and other civilizations are also going to use similar techniques uh to kind of maximize the amount of crops that they can have uh you know on elevation uh terrain that's like elevated along the mountainside or hillside uh the mayans also continued the practice use of slash and burn remember this was something like back from the neolithic era they'll cut down the trees to light everything on fire and then they use the ash with the remaining nutrients um, for to fertilize the soil. Uh, but the end result is that this could lead to deforestation if it's done extensively. Uh, and the mines would definitely do it too much and it'll come back and haunt them. Uh, corn, of course, is their main crop. They also had beans and squash. And keep in mind, just like uh, the rest of the Americas, there are no draft animals. So they don't have horses or cows or oxen or any other large animal to do a lot of the labor. So everything has to be done by hand, by human beings. And uh, even on top of that, they even have the llama. Uh, so here we see a picture of the cities of the Mayans. So the Mayans were city-states, right? So it was not the Mayan Empire or the Mayan kingdoms. There were some Mayan city-states. And as you can imagine, they constantly fought each other. Here we see a painting or a drawing of those fights. So you have uh, each <clears throat> each city state was ruled by a separate king. Uh, so sometimes one king might extend his authority, extend his power to have control of other minor city states. But for the most part, like each city state had their own king. So it's kind of reminiscent of like the the Greek city states, right? But instead of having like different governments like oligarchy and democracy. Uh, the Mayans were primarily just monarchy, right? You have the king, and when he dies, his son takes over by inheriting the title. Uh, unique thing about them is that the Mayan women sometimes might rule. Like if there wasn't a son, uh, then the daughter or the wife might take over. Uh, but then, you know, they were expected to have kids and pass it down to the next generation. So uh, why fight? Well, for one, of course, they're going to fight for resources, right, for food. Um, they're also going to fight to gain tribute, meaning that you conquer these people, but you're not going to rule over them as long as they pay you taxes every year. And what were the forms of taxes? Well, sometimes it was, you know, food or trade goods, weapons, tools, that sort of stuff, clothing. Uh, but also it was prisoners and slaves. Uh, so I might conquer your city to, for the sole purpose of capturing people that I'm going to enslave. Uh, to work on my fields, or to capture people that I'm going to use to sacrifice uh, for my gods. 
So um, just like the moche, originally the Mayans built these huge temples, right? And you could kind of see that these are more advanced and definitely have lasted longer than the uh, moche temples. Uh, but originally, so you had the, like these temples, and then uh, the they would build like little houses around it. But most of the people didn't live. There wasn't like an actual city, right? Um, so people lived out in the countryside, and they'll come into the city uh, to this like religious center uh, for religious holidays and human sacrifice and that sort of stuff. Uh, but over time, you know, as you know, there was greater and greater. Uh, food surplus more and more people got to live in what we would call cities so you have like bureaucrats you would have uh, artisans you would have merchants you would have um you know the priesthood and and the nobles and so those were like the so it wasn't like a city filled with you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people it was very small cities uh but it was a city state in that the surrounding farmland was also under the control of the central city so the Mayans, they would build these huge uh, temples, uh, sometimes, of course, only for sacrifices and stuff. But it was, they were really obsessed with the stars, with, you know, obs uh, observing the movement of the stars. And uh, they were really, really good astronomers. And uh, they would, could calculate the movement of the stars and uh, the planets and everything else. Uh, so here we see government. So notice that this guy, he is writing something. So they had scribes. Right, the uh, the um, the Mayans are the only civilization in the Americas to really have a, a writing system. They had the most advanced writing system of their time in the Americas, and it was in hieroglyphs. Right, so you would have a ruler with a big fancy hat and feathers, and the scribe would write down what with whatever the ruler is telling him to. Sorry, so uh, the Mayan kings they claim to be divine. I right, descended from a god, one of their many, many gods. Uh, poor people, commoners, peasants, they had to pay taxes. Uh, they also had to provide labor to build temples and roads and canals and irrigation and everything else. Uh, and they also had to fight. So when one city state goes to war against another city state, you know, the commoners are enlisted to fight in war. All right, uh, religion is up next. Here we see the famous rubber ball game that the Mayans played, which was passed down from the Olmecs. So like I mentioned before, the, you know, the Mayans are polytheistic. Uh, they practice the sacrifice of living beings, whether it's animals, like here you see they have a parrot that they're sacrificing, uh, or whether it's humans. And these rituals, again, were necessary to believe that, you know, their gods, including the most important god, which is the sun god and the rain god and the corn god, um, that these gods need the blood, need the sacrifice to continue uh, providing life to earth. And, you know, without the blood, the gods will grow weak. And if they grow weak, then it's literally the end of the world. And um, so there is this nobility uh, who, of course, are upper class. And sometimes women were, were part of the nobility, part of the priesthood, I should say. And, um, and they controlled everything. People paid taxes. People pay taxes to the to the government and to the priesthood uh, so that they can do these services on behalf of the people. Now, uh, human sacrifices again become a major part of their religious practice and one of the most sensational part of uh, the Mayan civilization. And um, they would uh, again; it was a necessary thing to keep the gods. Here you see a picture of the god, right? The sun god up there. Um, as part of like kind of like an everyday thing where you needed to continue uh, the, the the cycle of the world to not come to an end. Uh, the priest and the, uh, they, you know, they would also study math. They would study astronomy. They would study all these things because they're trying to figure out the movement of the planets and the stars because they believe that's where the gods reside and that you can kind of like determine what the gods want by examining the movement of the, you know, the galaxy or the universe, the solar system. All right, so here we see science and culture. Uh, so the Mayans, again, they had the most advanced writing in the Americas. Uh, they were really, really good. They're, they're nicknamed the Greeks of the the New World, of the Americas. 
uh, because they're kind of like similar in their cultural and uh, scientific and academic advancements. Uh, so the so the Mayan calendar was also one of the big achievements. They're very very accurate, uh, and they were more accurate than like other places like Rome would have had it during the same time. They also developed the concept of zero, which the Gupta Indians also had the concept of zero. Uh, the all right, so they, like I mentioned before, they had advanced writing. Uh, they wrote in hieroglyphs similar to the Egyptians, uh, the ancient Egyptians. Uh, and they also didn't have bronze or iron metallurgy, right? So they knew how to work silver and gold into like jewelry, but they never quite figured out how to make bronze or iron weapons and tools. All right, so for decline, decline, decline. Uh, so the minds, uh, there's no exact reason uh, why scientists and, and historians and archaeologists have figured out why the mines decline. However, uh, there's different factors that you put them all together. It gives a pretty good um, picture, you know, explanation. Uh, number one is deforestation. Right? They would cut and burn and cut and burn so many trees uh, that led to deforestation, which led to soil erosion, uh, and it became difficult and more difficult to, uh, to be able to grow crops in these, uh, the surrounding areas of these different city-states. Um, you also had population growth. So before they messed up the environment, they had too many people. Uh, and then this led to having limited resources, which led to war. So you had a lot of conflicts uh, between the different Mayan city-states. You know, it, it increased over time. Uh, then they had the, you know, the, the problem with the environment. Then you had, you know, because the cities and the surrounding areas couldn't provide enough resources, enough food, enough water for the people, you have people abandoning the cities, uh, and in fact, a lot of the Mayan temples were just covered up in trees and jungle forests because they were abandoned. No one could live there anymore, so they left everything behind. They left the you know the, the cities behind, and the jungles eventually over time like took over. So it wasn't until like very recent, like 100, 200 years ago, that they were rediscovered by archaeologists. So the Mayans they just left. That's all they did. They just moved to another part of Mexico. Uh, to kind of start over and um, so you have like you know civil war and plus environmental issues kind of leading to the decline of the Mayans uh, but the kind of the Mayan city states I should say because the Mayan people they continued to live there right in different parts of Mexico and, South, and Central America and Mesoamerica and even to this day there's still people who are descendants of the Maya that still live in that part of the world uh, so, again, the city-states might have declined, but the people themselves, uh, they just moved to another place and lived there uh, even to these times. All right, so that's it for the Mayans. Thanks for watching.